Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about intervals and interval notation. Before jumping right in, we need some motivation. The whole point of this discussion is to develop a sort of shorthand, because sometimes we need to talk about objects in particular and need a fast and efficient way to write things. Suppose that I'm discussing the set of all real numbers, which are greater than or equal to negative 1, and less than but not equal to 3. The sentence is a little lengthy and it's kind of hard to follow, so we need to fix this. One thing that I could try to do is draw this. I could sketch some crude representation of the number line and highlight what I need and point arrows as to what is included and what is not included into consideration. But even then this is a little messy and in terms of just note taking, this is inefficient. So let's talk about how to fix this. I'm going to pull up the same statement and the same picture that I drew in the previous slide and then demonstrate the proper way to write what I'm talking about and how to draw it on a number line. The next slide that we'll look at will define this kind of thing in general, but I figured it's good to see what it looks like first. The proper way to encode our number line is with the straight line above the segment of numbers that we're talking about, draw a shaded end circle above negative 1, and an open circle above 3. This is certainly easier and quicker than drawing arrows to negative 1 and 3 and writing whether or not it's included. It's also consistent, so every time that you see this sort of drawing, it's understood what you're talking about. The way to denote this segment of numbers without drawing it on paper is to write it like this, with a square bracket around negative 1 and a right parenthesis around 3. So this notation is just describing the set of numbers that we're talking about. All numbers between negative 1 and 3, which include negative 1 itself, but do not include 3. We call such a collection an interval. The negative 1 and 3 are basically our buffers that tell us where our set begins and where it ends. So we call these numbers endpoints. Now we can define this in the general setting. An interval is a set of real numbers which lie between two particular endpoints. This slide will talk about how to write, draw, and talk about an interval that has two numeric endpoints that we'll call A and B. We will talk about what to do when one or both of our endpoints are infinite, but for now let's stick to the numeric case. For this we're going to assume that A is less than B. Whenever you see this notation, I'm referring to the set of all real numbers that are between A and B and that also includes A and B. I know to include A and B in this set because they both have square brackets written next to them. The way to draw this set on a number line is to draw the line segment from A to B and color the ends with filled in circles. This next piece of notation denotes the set of all numbers from A to B that include A but not B. Again, I'm including A because there's a square bracket next to it, but I am not including B because of the parenthesis. You draw this on the number line in basically the same way, except instead of having a filled in circle for B, you have an open circle because we're not including it. The third piece of notation looks like this. This is the interval from A to B that does not include A, but does include B. A has a parenthesis, so we don't include it, but B has a square bracket, which means that we do include it. Putting this on the number line gives us an open circle over A and a filled in circle over B. This last piece of notation describes the interval from A to B that doesn't include A and does not include B. Parentheses on both, so include neither. To draw this, put open circles over A and B and connect them with the line segment. So at this point we know how to write and draw four types of intervals that have numeric endpoints. Now we can discuss how to describe them verbally. For the first bullet point, I would describe this interval as the interval from A to B that is closed at A and B. The second is the interval that is closed at A and open at B. The third is the interval that is open at A and closed at B. And the fourth is the interval from A to B that is open at A and B. So the first interval is called a closed interval, the last one is called an open interval, and the two in the middle are called half open intervals. Again, the whole point of the slide and this video is to describe an easy, fast, and efficient way of describing sets. In these examples, we are going to write and draw the following. First, we'll write and draw the interval that is open at negative 4 and closed at 12. I'll go ahead and say that conventionally we write intervals like we write number lines, with our smaller numbers on the left and our bigger numbers on the right simply because we read from left to right. Since I'm open at negative 4 and closed at 12, my interval will look like this, and my number line will put an open circle over 4 
in a filled-in circle over 12. To draw the interval open at both 3 and 4, I will use parentheses on both ends and get the following. When I draw my number line, I'll have open circles over 3 and 4, and that's all there is to it. If ever you're taking a class, interval notation is fast and efficient and it's easy to read, and if ever you need to draw on a number line, use this method. Now let's talk about what to do when our endpoints are infinite. In other words, if we have an endpoint of negative or positive infinity. Such endpoints will always carry an open parenthesis because infinity is not a number, so it's not something you can include into a set. The open interval from negative infinity to a real number a can be written like this. Simply, this set describes all numbers that are less than a. On our number line, we draw it like this, with an open circle over a and an arrow pointing to the left towards negative infinity. The interval starting at a and going to positive infinity is written like this. And on a number line, we put an open circle over a and then draw an arrow pointing towards positive infinity. The arrows in both cases simply just imply it doesn't stop. If ever you see this notation, it really just means the entire real line because it has no left or right point that are numbers. Now we only describe this in terms of open intervals, but similar definitions exist for closed intervals. So like before, we'll be given an interval that's described in words and we'll need to write it out and draw it. So we'll write and draw the interval that's open at negative four and goes to infinity. When we write it out, it looks like parentheses on both ends and we have an open circle sitting above negative four on the number line where an arrow points to the right towards infinity. For our next example, write out the interval that goes from negative infinity to three that is also closed at three. When we write this out, we put a square bracket around three draw a filled in circle on the number line and point the arrow to the left towards infinity. The last thing we'll talk about today are these unions of intervals. The motivation being, how do we write down a set that looks something like this? I can't describe this as the open interval from negative three to four because I have the separation between negative one and zero. The first observation I'll make is that I have the half open interval open at negative three, close at negative one, and the half open interval that's closed at zero and open at four. So writing down these sets is almost enough to talk about the portion that's colored in on the number line, but what I'm gonna do is write this U looking symbol in between my half open intervals. Really what I'm saying is that I have two different portions of the number lines that I wanna talk about, which are separated. The longhand for this is that this is the set of all real numbers, which are greater than negative three, less than or equal to negative one, or greater than or equal to zero, and less than four. Again, that's a lot to say, so we use our interval notation and this new symbol which denotes the union of these intervals. Again, the whole point of this interval notation and this union symbol is to give myself a shorthand so I can talk about sets like these in a faster way. So as a quick example, look at the number line, highlight these particular segments, and we want to write this in interval notation. I have an arrow pointed towards negative infinity, and then I have two segments that have numeric endpoints. The leftmost segment is the interval from negative infinity to negative two, closed at two. The middle segment is the interval that's open at zero, closed at three. And the right segment is the interval that is closed at five and open at nine. Write them all out, write union signs in between them, and then you're done.